Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Pinkin Channels. Connor Southall joined today by French football writer and podcaster Jeremy Smith. Let's talk about Norwich City's latest signing, Pierre Le Malou. Uh, he's joined Norwich City from Nice in a deal of uh, worth around 3.5 million. I think the overall deal probably somewhere closer to 5 million on add ons and clauses and whatnot. But that's all semantics anyway. We we're, uh, we're here to talk about him. 28 years old. He's uh, been at Nice for four years. Jeremy, um, I guess the best place to start really is for you to give us an insight into what sort of player Norwich City have, have acquired, what sort of footballer is Le Malou. So, yeah, in, t- in terms of just his sort of on-field play, he's a classic number eight, which is a, you know the, the shirt number he was wearing, proper central midfielder who kind of is, is a great link between defence and attack, can do a little bit of everything, reasonable tackler, comfortable on the ball, nice range of passing and a decent shot from outside the area as well um can take set pieces a good crosser so um yeah i mean not spectacular at anything but can do a little bit of it all and he's pretty versatile as well doesn't just play central midfield but can fill in sort of on both wings if need be push up a little bit more if he has to he can kind of drop back and sit in front of the defense so a a real sort of all-rounder and then in terms of off the pitch or attitude or whatever, a, a real gem. Like he's, he kind of, he started, he only became a professional at 22. He went through, he was originally at Bordeaux and um, their youth set up and was let go. Um, but even then he's all, all, all the quotes he's ever given with it. You know, I don't know if I was really wanted to be a professional footballer at that time anyway. So he kind of went the amateur football route, which I think in a lot of cases actually maybe take some things away because you haven't had that you know 24 hours a day grounding from sort of 14 15 16 but you've got maybe a more perspective and a wider wider world view about i don't know work ethic and teamwork outside football that kind of thing so he's you know he comes across as really mature really nice guy he's very appreciative of everything he's he's been able to achieve and and yeah sort of a top teammate i think so overall i think um a nice a nice little buy there by norwich Mm, talk to us a little bit about the role he he had at Nice in terms of tactically. He was in sort of the left side of a midfield free for the, for sort of the majority of last season. Is is that right? Yeah, Nice have been pretty unsettled the last couple of years. Um, in some ways, positively because they got the new ownership who came in and they've sort of brought in a lot of players, but they've been pretty hit and miss. And then um, obviously Patrick Vieira who everyone had very high hopes for as a coach, but hasn't quite hit the heights yet and, and left um, during last season. <clears throat> it's replaced by um, sort of former Nice assistant coach, um, who I think a lot of people weren't expecting much from, but he actually um, did a, a decent job, um, more than keeping Nice afloat. I think that, you know, they, they had a decent end to the season. Um, and yeah, he was, like I said, he, he kind of, those right footed, he sort of, he does often kind of veer towards the left, but sort of filling all those spaces in midfield and often playing, often being given the captain's armband as well. And uh, just a very important part of the team, sort of, like I said, a kind of wise head, not on young shoulders. I mean, I think he's 28 now, so he's already sort of arguably just past the peak of his career, but um, a really important sort of settling influence for what was actually a relatively young Nice team in the end. And you've got people like Salaber and Tadebo behind you and some like Guri in front of you. Um, he, he is one of the more senior figures, even if he hasn't got the, the kind of the number of appearances that you'd always expect from a, a 28, 29 year old. Um, and so he sort of, yeah, kind of, I wouldn't say controlled the midfield in terms of, um, you know, he's not the kind of personality that really puts his stamp on a game, but he's sort of crucial, as I said, as a kind of link. You need someone like that who's who's always busting a gut for 90 minutes and, and um, you know, is, is never going to sort of drop his head or, or lose concentration when others who might be down as more match winners, they can sort of blow hot and cold. Whereas with him, you sort of, you know what you're going to get. Mm, that's yeah, that's that's really interesting. I think a, a lot of Norwich fans have 
looked at this signing so far, maybe looked at, at the fee to an extent and seen a guy who's made what over 150 appearances in the, at the top flight of France and have gone, well, how come Norwich have been able to get him relatively cheaply? So talk us through kind of your perspective of maybe that side of it, but also why Nice have maybe decided to, to let him go at this stage. I think, um, first of all, I have to admit, like when I first saw the saw the move, I was like, not underwhelmed, but certainly, you know, it's, I was thinking, you know, this isn't the kind of player that's going to score the goals to keep you up or, some, or something like that. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's a really clever move. First of all, like I said, or like you said, sorry, it's only up to 5 million, which nowadays is nothing, especially for a relatively experienced player from another top flight, um, you know, one of the supposedly big five leagues, are they... Um, some people might argue about that in the state the state of league at the moment, um, and I think for a team who, with the best will in the world, and I hope you don't mind me saying it as a Brighton fan, I, I know the feeling as well. <laughs> the aim is to stay up. Um, I think he's the kind of steady influence um, and sort of like I said, mature personality who I think can add a lot. You know, even if he's not starting every game, for example, I think he'll he'll be a good influence on the younger players, and um, I think will be a good squad member. You know, an important player who you can bring on or fill in if someone else is suspended or injured or whatever. And I don't think will cause any trouble if he's if he's not a, a regular starter. Um, in terms of why <coughs> Nice got rid of, well, not got rid. I think in France, there's very much this sort of there's an acknowledgement that it's very much a selling league anyway. And um, I'm sort of speculating a little bit, but he, at 28, there's only going to be a limited number of chances now for him to experience playing abroad. And as I said, he's sort of appreciative of everything he's done, but he has sort of, you can see a kind of steady career trajectory from sort of um, even within his sort of amateur career, gradually going up the divisions and then joining Dijon in Ligue 2, Ligue 2, getting promoted with them to Ligue 1. But again, they're, they're another club who sort of, well, until this year, they did get relegated, but kind of their aim is to stay up. And then going to Nice, who are a lot more upwardly mobile. And he's been an important part of the Nice team the last couple of years. But Nice really are now sort of looking to, to push on. They've got the millions or billions of Jim Radcliffe and Ineos, um, they've brought in Christophe Gautier, who's obviously just just won the league with Lille. And I think they are going to be looking to try to make themselves sort of regular Champions League candidates. And um, I guess maybe he, a mixture of him not quite fitting the profile of where they want to go in future and maybe not wanting to deny him the chance to experience the Premier League, probably a bigger pay packet and, you know, just another another footballing culture before he sort of goes past 30 or whatever. I think that, yeah, in France, it's very much sort of with most clubs as a sort of acknowledgement, if you do your three or four or five years with us, um, show that you're a sort of good servant or whatever, then we won't stand in your way if we get a nice little fee for you. So I think it's one of those things that probably benefits all three parties, like both, both clubs and the player himself. You, you kind of mentioned your reaction to the move earlier on. We kind of surprised that he's taken, not maybe that he's taken the step to the Premier League, because I think for any player playing abroad, they always speak about it, don't they, as being that next step. But the fact that maybe a Premier League team has come in for him, is, is that something that's caught you sort of off guard, I suppose, a little bit? A little bit, just because, I mean, obviously there's so many French players or French League players going abroad and particularly to the Premier League and even the Championship now that, um, you know, by the law of averages, almost every player gets mentioned each summer and especially this summer where there are sort of financial issues. I think there's going to be a lot of players going across. But usually when you, you're sort of reading the rumour mill, it's usually the the younger players and the sort of 17 or 18 year old kind of future stars who are looking to the the sort of lower half of the Premier League. They want to name, make a name for themselves at, I don't know, Southampton have had a few, Newcastle obviously, and then will look to maybe um, sort of, uh, I guess, get into the the, um, the wanted list of, of the, the sort of the big four or big six or whatever. Um, so, and Lise Malou is not not one of those players who you would expect to see on any of those lists. 
but he's also one of those, you know, there's a kind of rich tradition, I could probably reel off quite a few names of really solid store league out players who will never let you down, who always do a good job, whatever team they're playing for, won't rarely get big headlines, but are the kind of players that league out teams build 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 themselves around because they've such a big turnover and because whoever your star player is one year is going to almost certainly leave the following summer and you have to rebuild again you need some kind of basic stop spine to build around and Lise Malou is that kind of player you know the last three four years with all the comings and goings at Nice both on the bench and on the pitch he's been one of those sort of um, sure things that, that you can rely on. So you, you don't think of him as one of those players who's going to go abroad because he doesn't get the the yeah the big big sort of I don't know starry lights around his name. But at the same time, he's exactly the kind of player that you can't begrudge any kind of success or big move that he, that he that he gets because he's really earned it. Uh, I've seen a lot since this move was confirmed from from Nice fans. It seems like he was quite a sort of a divisive figure amongst the fan base, I suppose. Can you sort of tell us a little bit about why that was the case? Why perhaps some fans didn't take to him as strongly as, as others? Is there a real reason why he kind of split opinion whilst he was at Nice? I think as a as a sort of professional and as a personality, like I said, I think he seems a, a really good guy. I just, I think last year when things were pretty bad, um, near the end of, of Vieira's time there, because I think he's one of the more senior players, he he occasionally was more outspoken about, you know, when, when the team played badly, for example, and sort of stood up and said we weren't good enough or, you know, after the they got smashed, I think, 6-2 against Leverkusen and he came out and said, you know, frankly, we didn't play with enough intensity and at 3-1 we just stopped playing, that kind of thing. Um, so maybe there's an element of that. And as I said, he's sort of, because he's not spectacular and he's not, I don't know, making goal line clearances or scoring match winning hat tricks or whatever, maybe he's the kind of player that it's easy to sort of bash, you know, have a have a dig at or people might say, well, you know, we're never going to get anywhere while we've got players like him. But I think, as I said, he's the kind of player that a lot of teams need. And I don't know, I'm not comparing him to Conte, but... You know, in the France team, you've got all the big stars like Pogba and maybe after this Euro, it's a really bad time to use France as an example. But, you know, what I mean, you've got like the stars behind like Varane and Pogba next to him and Mbappe in front of him, that kind of thing. But without the understated, quiet player like Conte, they probably won't won't achieve anything. And I think Lise Malou at times has been an... an that kind of important player for Nice that, you know, while everyone else is losing their heads, at least you know what you're going to get. And yes, it's n- it's never or very, very rarely spectacular. You know, a couple of his, his shots from outside, goals from outside the area have, have made highlight reels, but it's never spectacular. But you don't necessarily want 11 spectacular players if sort of three weeks out of every four go missing. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, spot on. Um, you, I, I'll ask you two questions here because one is a bit Norris specific that you might not know the answer to. So feel free to sort of skirt around that one and answer the second one if that's the case. But in terms of Norwich's midfield options, I know you're a Brighton fan, so I wouldn't expect you to know all of them. But um, th- there's a, kind of a lot of comparisons with Kenny McLean. I don't know if you've ever seen Kenny play or or ever. Maybe th- th- those two uh, are similar players. So is that something that that you kind of see or, or do you see him fitting into Norwich's midfield somewhere else? And if you don't know too much about that one, that's fine. I was going to ask you about in terms of adaptability to the Premier League, how, how do you feel he his sort of characteristics and his style? I guess the consistency is a big thing for all the reasons you kind of listed there, because if you're a side like Norwich and you're, you're getting, as you mentioned there, you're being put under pressure to survive and every game you're not going to be dominant and you need those performances who performers who are going to be at relatively consistent levels every week. So, how do you see his characteristics fitting into the Premier League? So, yeah, kind of two questions in one, but I've could try to help you out a little bit. Yeah, thanks. I've, like, everything I've I've seen about this move, like literally everything, they're they're comparing him with McLean. But I have to admit, I haven't seen enough of McLean to be able to to comment on that. In terms of his adaptability, my my main concern, and it's. People talk about, you know, the difference in physicality. I don't think it's a question of physicality because League 1 is quite physical, but I think it's more the intensity. Premier League is a lot more end-to-end and uh, 
league now you, you get your sort of natural breaks in play. Um, and I think often it's the midfielders who struggle the most to adapt to the Premier League. Um, <clears throat> I, because he's, it sort of works both ways. Because he's he's that little bit older, you kind of think, is he going to find it harder to adapt? He's certainly got maybe less time or there'll be less patience. Um, you know, the club will make, or the fans will give him less less time to adapt because he's going to need to hit the ground running straight away. Um, on the other hand, you could say, well, with that experience, he's he's maybe got more of an awareness of his own body and, and how and when to take those little breathers where he can and how to manage it all. That's, that's I think, my concern. Um, but, as I said, every every sort of stage he's, or hurdle he's faced, he's, he's faced it down well. I actually read an interview with him saying that the big shock for him was not going from league to league out was going from amateur football to professional football that you really notice the difference there so obviously this is another level again but it's kind of in a way it's a similar problem to one that he experienced sort of seven eight years ago so maybe he can take something from that letter and that transition from from amateur to professional and, and sort of apply it to transition from league out to premier league possibly um as i said i, I don't i would, certainly wouldn't expect him to be sort of you know starting 38 games a season or anything like that but i think that he'll you know he'll definitely play a crucial role at times um, whether it's coming off the bench, whether it's you know st starting um, and then you know ro rotating with with McLean, for example, um, I think I think his natural intelligence and his personality, I think, might sort of carry him through. Where again, I could name some midfielders who've who've come to England who've struggled physically, but that's kind of affected them. Not mentally, but it's affected their personality, and I think their heads have gone down, and the fans have sort of picked up on that and and really got on their backs. I think Lee's Malou is the kind of player who it will be obvious he's giving everything, and and um, and I th I'd like to think that the the Norwich fans will really take to him. Yeah, we're quite a patient bunch here in Norfolk, uh, thankfully, which is which is good. Uh, you, you've kind of alluded throughout to his to his footballing journey, which is really interesting. We've you've got kind of as, as you mentioned earlier, being released by Bordeaux, going into the non-league system, working his way back up with obviously uh, Dijon and, uh, and then to Nice. Uh, and you mentioned kind of the the steady improvement throughout. Just talk to us a little bit in, in perhaps a little bit more depth about kind of the different steps within his journey because he went from is it is it right saying he went from essentially what non-league football in France to the Champions League in two years it was, it was a pretty quick progression wasn't it uh yeah yeah relatively he kind of he was like I said he saw he played for like two or three amateur clubs and and sort of gradually worked his way up so the last one he was at I think they they're in the division d'honneur which I have to work it out quickly it's probably like maybe fifth, sixth division, something like that. But I think they were sort of promotion candidates. They won the sort of local amateur cup back to back and he was their star player. So I think Dijon were already looking at him sort of a good six months, if not a year before he moved. And from that, and he, he again, a, an interview that I saw with him, he said to his parents and, and brother, apparently at the start of his last season with the amateur clubs, you know, I feel like this is the year I need to put everything into it because it's all or nothing. You know, if I really want to aspire to to get to the next level, I have to do it this year. And it's only afterwards that he said that when he said next level, he was thinking sort of third or fourth division. So the jump to to the second division is actually quite a big step for him. And, and the, the fact that he took to it immediately and was an important part of the team that got promoted, I think, says a lot about his adaptability and how he can adapt quickly. Um, then help Dijon stay up in league now, which is, again, an, another big step up. And then that, that move to Nice, which, um, like I said, Nice have had their issues, but certainly from a club whose only ambition is to stay up to a club who's, who are looking to, to Europe... Um, every season is is again a, a complete change in mindset. So, yeah, I don't know if he Champions League. I'm not sure he played. Did he play Champions League? Maybe, probably a failed qualifier somewhere. But 
I'm not convinced it was Champions League, certainly Europa League. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a very quick turnaround. Like I said, he was he hadn't played professional football by the time he played, he turned 22. So within six years to be to have gone through all those steps and now into the Premier League, I think says a lot about his character as well as his ability. And that's yeah, that's that's really interesting. It's a, it's a fascinating journey. It really is sort of through French football, and obviously now at twenty eight, taking that next step to go abroad is um, it's going to be fascinating to see how he how he gets on. Uh, you're you're a Brighton fan, sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say there's there's a couple of players like that. Like there's for example, Bu Idea, who I think has just signed in in um, Spain, but a lot of English clubs were after him. The, the Ras striker, a similar kind of thing. Like it, he tried and failed with several clubs professional clubs kind of completely forgot about it got his job as an engineer whatever um carried on playing his amateur football again now he's just signed for a la liga club so i think it's they're really nice stories but i think also they do bring a lot i think especially nowadays when you've got you know 17 year olds who are already multi-millionaires with agents and endorsements and all that kind of thing to have someone who does have a a bit of an idea of of you know real life and having a proper job and that kind of thing um i think it, it probably brings a lot to his ability to sort of i guess look at everything that happens on the football pitch with a bit of distance and and relativity but it probably also rubs off on the other players around you which i think is a good thing hmm. Absolutely. I, I was going to ask you, obviously, you're, you're a Brighton fan. Um, so in terms of Crystal Palace, they're, they're obviously a club that maybe aren't your your favourite. I think that's that's probably the diplomatic way to put it. But they have just appointed Patrick Vieira, of course, his, his former manager at, at Nice. I think uh, Vieira called him a match winner in, in an interview at some stage. Uh, are you surprised? I, I mean, look, it, it, Vieira's been in the job, what, a week? So maybe difficult to put his sort of full identity across. But are you relatively surprised or, or I guess do you think he would have been keen on taking him to, to Crystal Palace because he seems to be a relatively big fan of him? I think it's it it wouldn't have surprised me because obviously that there's that connection there and, and by all accounts Crystal Palace are having a really big clear out and so you probably especially someone like Vieira who's coming off a bit of a failure at Nice you probably sort of want some um, again some kind of <clears throat> some people you can completely trust and, and rely on. And I think Luis Malou was that kind of person for Vieira um, and someone that he knows well, he doesn't need to get to know this new player who comes in. So that would have made a lot of sense to me. But yeah, I, I don't know if Palace are sort of, you know, they cleared out a lot of sort of 30 plus year olds. I know Luis Malou is just, just below that, but maybe they're looking to, to you know, really start from a, a much younger younger group of players I don't know but as you said I think probably more than anything else it might have just been a little bit too late mm, absolutely Jeremy thank you very much that was um, that was a fascinating insight into into Norwich City's new edition I know the the fans will, will really appreciate that looking forward to um to watching him in action next season thank you very much for joining me thank you all very much for watching we'll leave links to uh, Jeremy's Twitter account and all the places you can find him down below uh, he, he does some excellent work on French football so well worth checking out indeed make sure to leave a like as well how excited are you for this new signing let us know down below and we'll see you again very very soon